my misspeaking a little earlier this evening, Bob Berta is giving us our short presentation tonight, not a month from now. Uh, Bob is um, what I might refer to as a multi-dimensional person. He has so many interests going in all different directions, seemingly at the same time. Um, he enjoys astronomy, kayaking, biking, fly fishing, camping, and music. Uh, speaking of music, uh, he's a performing musician, plays electric and pipe organ, accordion, and MIDI accordion, whatever that is, <laughs> and synthesizer. Um, he also enjoys being part of astronomy clubs, not only this one, uh, but also he is a member of the San Francisco Amateur Astronomers, and locally he's also a member of the Oakland Astronomy Club and the Seven Ponds Astronomy Club. In his spare time, he and his son are heavily involved in the Boy Scouts. Uh, he's quite involved in the, what is it called, the K bar A? Or D bar A. D bar A. D. Uh, uh, Scout. Observatory there. Yeah, an observatory that he facilitated. Um, so, and I cut out some of the stuff he does because the intro would be longer than his presentation. Uh, tonight, he's going to be talking about something called the Olbers Paradox. Why is the sky dark at night? Okay, do you need to adjust the mic or am I okay on that? Okay, you just turn it up towards you. Okay, how do I, is that loud enough now? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, this is, you might think, in fact, I've mentioned this talk to a few people. <laughs> <I> think, Duh. <laughs> but actually, this is actually a, uh, something that has been a uh, uh, question by a lot of people. Uh, Thomas Dix in the mid 1500s, Kepler in 1610. Um, even Edmund Halley in the 18th century, and even Edgar Allan Poe wrote about this. Um, and simply, what it is, they reason, if you add up all the photons spilling out of all the stars and galaxies and the space in between, there's enough light to lighten up the universe. Yet when we look up at the night sky, this is clearly not the case. So why is the sky dark at night? Well, you have to remember, they didn't know that, as we do now, there was a big bang. They thought, no, the universe is infinite, had an infinite history. Um, if you look at all the stars, you might say, well, as the stars get farther away, they're going to get dimmer, dimmer and dimmer, right? Well, on the other hand, what they reasoned was, if you have stars here and then your stars behind you, behind there, are dimmer, but beyond them there are more stars, more stars. So they fill in all the spaces. So theoretically, they say that you should have just as much light during the day as you do at night. But obviously, this is not the case, right? So there's a flaw in that logic. Um, Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers was an amateur uh, astronomer and a physician. Uh, and his paradox says, in 1823, he wrote this if the universe is infinite and static at any given angle from the Earth, the line of sight will, uh, will end at the surface of the star. An infinitely old universe means there, there has been plenty of time for the light from every star that has ever shined to reach your eyes. When we, look, when we look up, as I just mentioned before, there should be a star everywhere in every piece of sky. Uh, because the sky at night should be just as bright because of that as from the day. This is known as, uh, excuse me, he also came up with the concentric shell theory of infinity, and this, he also uh, found several comets, Vesta was one of them. Wait. I mean, not, even, uh, <laughs> not, not the, the comet, but that was the, uh, the uh, asteroid. asteroid yeah. uh, so, what do you think is the answer? Okay, the state of the astronomy in the 1900s and farther back, first of all, they hadn't discovered galaxies yet. That was until, what, about 30s, 1930s? Uh, they didn't understand fully the nature yeah. of space and time, the large scale of the universe, the expansion of the universe, or the age of the universe. <clears throat> 
Uh, the Big Bang obviously has important implications for Hobart's paradox. Uh, because the universe does have a finite age, one reason may be that many photons have not reached us, those within our observable universe. The darkness of the sky is a characteristic that, in fact, argues against infinity. But there is another paradox. Uh, the Big Bang effect states that, that the only universe is full of photons. Everywhere, hot photons permeated space-time, and at that time, the cosmos was truly bright. Given that these hot, bright, early conditions were existing, shouldn't everywhere we looked in the sky reveal the remnant of the Big Bang? Shouldn't there be a luminous curtain of light behind every star and every galaxy we see? The curtain of light is there, actually but your eyes can't see it. Due to the expansion of the universe, the wavelengths of these hot, early photons have been stretched over 1,100 times longer than the original wavelengths. The luminous background is today filled with relatively cool microwave photons, invisible after being stretched by the expanding fabric of our universe over 13 billion years. So that background light, the Big Bang, is being currently imaged by special detectors, such as the Planck Space Telescope. Ober was correct, and so was Diggs, Kepler, Halley, and Poe. They thought that the night sky should be as bright as the noonday sun, and it is, only to our, only to our eyes that are sensitive, excuse me, only to eyes that are sensitive to these microwaves. If our eyes were sensitive to microwaves, there would have been no question. It would be just as bright at nighttime as it is during the day. Okay. science fiction. Yeah. Well, all right. Granted. But I do not discuss science fiction in the meetings of the Foreign Astronomical Society. I know kosher from Trev. Now, as I was saying, he was something of an actual philosopher. Mm -hmm. So were most science fiction writers. I wouldn't possibly comment. His, his account of Voyage to the Antarctic is one of my favorite books by him. But the implication of this actually is that, in, in effect, this actually tells you that there was a Big Bang, because otherwise, there probably would be fully you know, full curtain of light up there all the time. So that actually sort of is a deduction for that. Is that only if the universe is infinite and there are infinite stars that there would be right. light right. Yeah, in spite of the infinite this? universe? In, there is no age of the universe, right? And so we don't know who there are those stars. So in spite of the microwave background, and background, ignoring the microwave background, mm -hmm. the sky would still be dark at night if the universe is either not infinite or doesn't have an right. infinite number of right. stars. Exactly. Bob, how, how recent was this, was this hypothesis put together? Uh, well, the original hypothesis was by that Ober fact. No, no, I, 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 I've read that Ober's paradox before, mm -hmm. but I've never heard the explanation of it, as you put it. It's mm -hmm. quite a rare thing. Uh, Is this something um, in the last 15, 20 years? I mean, years? cosmic, cosmic oh, expansion oh, solved it pretty well. Yeah. Right. I mean, this goes back to Hubble, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, right. It it, the and, and to the discovery mm -hmm. of, the, of the microwave background uh, oh, radiation. Well, that was, that was confirmation, yeah. but the yeah. fact that the fact that expansion stretched the wavelengths of light explained. Yeah, right. right, but who 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 put who took who it upon it himself to say, you remember Olberg's paradox? <laughs> Here's what it's all about. Is this something I think it was pretty soon after Hubble. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, so like, like it was just kind I'm of just gradually curious, added your, on to in your research these, uh, for this, for this yeah, topic. Yeah, I don't know exactly I can't answer that. I can't I wonder if there's something exactly like it's 30, 40 years old. It's okay, we, we we discovered the cosmic background radiation. We discovered that we have galaxies, and you know it's not you know all you know stars everywhere. And it's just been over the years. It's, it's been yeah. confirming. Uh, the Olber, Olber came up. With, then, Olber so. came up with the paradox. But we, uh, over the years, have added to it. Uh, 
Okay. Well, I mean, it would be cool to know who said, aha, we've solved it. Yeah. yeah. What, was there an aha moment? That's kind of what yeah. I mean. Well, probably somebody figured this out. Moment. I don't think any of us knows who it was or exactly mm -hmm. when. I just kind of picture a couple of astrophysicists sitting over lunch one day and saying, talking about stuff, they say, oh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, I probably yeah, yeah, question. I didn't see you said, you know, John Jones, you know, came with this and said, this refutes this or whatever. I think you should take credit for it then. <laughs> <laughs>